this is my favorite man, Paul. Well, Jesus is my favorite, but Paul is the marketplace guy that, that we can all look up to. Amen? So did I get the right one here? Yeah, there it is. Eight. Acts 19, verse 8. He, Paul, went into the synagogue and spoke how? Now, that was kind of an anti-fragile thing to do too, wasn't it? He's been like already stoned to death by going into synagogues. This guy was just coming back at it. Uh, you would say a glutton for punishment. No, he loved the Lord. And he knew he was going to start out in the synagogues and he was going to preach to Jews first. And he speaks boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he, Paul, departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. I don't know, you might have heard me teach about this. I'm sorry if I'm repeating, but would anybody know what the school of Tyrannus was? It's in the city of Ephesus, and it was like a, a big theater where this guy Tyrannus, you know, would hold school, and they would break, the school would break for lunch, and Paul was allowed to use this to teach the Bible. What was he doing in the morning? Making tents. Okay, so this, you know, this is where he was, they call it bivocational. He would work in the morning, he would teach in the afternoon at the school of Tyrannus, and then he would go back to work. All right, so that's a picture of a marketplace minister. Think about it for a minute, if you would, just engage with me here. What would be the logic of telling Paul, you know what, Paul, what if you quit making tents and just put full time in the ministry? Wouldn't you be more effective? What's your answer, church? Not necessarily. Why? He would be counting on other people's finances, but what if the people said, you know what, we, you know, we're willing to pay your salary? Yeah, see the anti-fragile part? I get stronger by being with the lost. They're not defiling me. I'm helping lead some of them to the Lord, and I'm remembering what it's like to be like them. So I don't lose the vernacular, so I don't forget how it is, because if i got to treat other people the way I'd want to be treated if I were them. And if I'm only with Christians all the time, I'm going to lose that connection to the lost. So we're never supposed to lose our connection to the lost. He did it. He would be working with the lost in the morning and then go teach in the afternoon. We could argue more effectively because he had been with the lost. Ah, that's a stretch for some people, but you see if you want to go there. This continued for how long? Two years. Two years. So that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Don't you find that interesting? Wouldn't you think all miracles are unusual? <laughs> like, most people would be happy with a regular old miracle. But Paul worked unusual, I mean God, not Paul. God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. I'm going to camp there for a minute, okay? Because, I don't know, how many of you have heard a message about handkerchiefs? Yeah, right? Most of us have. Well, I never knew what this meant, so I tried to dig in a little bit. And there's not a lot about this in the literature I was looking, looking at, but I was thinking, why apron? A handkerchief and apron, like, wasn't making sense because I'm thinking apron means a chef. But I know he's a tent maker. And the more you look into it, you find out that tent makers wore like a canvas apron because they had to keep their tools in, in the pockets of the apron. And the handkerchief was really what we would call a bandana. And it was around his head because it's hot in Ephesus. And while he's leaning over, he's catching his perspiration. So here's, the day, here's what happened. He would go in his work clothes to the hall of Tyrannus, and they would say to him, Paul, there's a bunch of guys that are really sick that couldn't get here. Could you lend us your work clothes and your bandana? We're going to take them and we're going to lay them on the sick people because it has your sweat in it. <laughs> it's carrying your essence. And that'll be enough to cure these people. We'll bring it back so you can go back to work. Like, just lend us your smell for a little while. Who would think? The bandana? That's sweat rag, some people would call it. Yeah. Anointed. 
because it's what you were designed to do. Even though it's work, it could still be anointed. That's where he wants us to live. We saw this in first person with Heidi Baker. I said before I used Billy Graham and uh, Reinhard Bonnke, but when we were in Africa, we saw somebody operating in the full flower of what she was designed to be. Like you could picture God saying in the, in the womb, when those first two cells came together, we were watching somebody fully into what she was called to be. We were seeing miracles pretty regularly. You know, among people that would be considered the least of these to first world people, like we would be here. She didn't care. It was a sight to behold, I tell you. It was really something you'll never forget. But why can't I be that? You can. Why can't we all be? That's what we should be striving for. I would love it for my bandana to heal somebody someday. <laughs> Only a couple more verses, okay? It says, then some itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. <laughs> also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> now remember, Paul had been operating for two years. He had built a beachhead of people who understood the operation of signs and wonders that were going on. And here are some other people that thought they could do it just by repeating the same words, but they didn't have the same essence. They, they hadn't sold their lives out the way Paul had. And they're in for a rude surprise, aren't they? In 16, then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them. So they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So what was the fear of the Lord? Fear of the Lord, because if the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified, it's like, wow, if we're messing around, we better clean up our act, because this God has power. And this guy, Paul, is operating in that power. And we know that because he's operating in it with us, the lost, out in the marketplace. <laughs> I love this. The whole city changed. Many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. All because of a demonstration of the power that Paul did while interacting with the lost. Through his work. Making tents. What could be redemptive about that? Doesn't matter. What you do doesn't matter. It's the way you do it. Now, you know, there's certain jobs you probably shouldn't have. We'll go there another night.